Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube? Diggy546. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. All right, folks, it is week one of the NFL season. Week one of the Giants season. And we got the Vikings coming up. Now, I will be dropping a video, uh, as I usually do towards the beginning of the year. And I'm trying to keep it going through this whole year on every single game from week one to get my predictions on the outcomes of those. But let's start off with a preview of the Giants and Vikings and uh, let's get straight to it. We don't have any game to review, so this, this video can go out pretty early on in the week and we can just kind of have fun the rest of the week with stuff. So I think my biggest thing, before I even get into the, the, the specifics, my biggest thing here is this game is, is really between the quarterbacks. I think the quarterback situations are very similar. And when I say that, I mean two guys that I think have the potential to light up the other defense, to have really good days, uh, they have decent supporting cast now uh, who have had pretty similar careers. Sam Donald has moved around more, but Sam Donald has not had help. Daniel Jones hasn't had help, but they both kind of look like players where you're like, you know, they haven't had help, but they also haven't helped themselves. So just, just going over some stats, and I'll throw this up on the screen too. Uh, and 54 starts for Sam Donald and 60 starts. For Daniel Jones. So around the same amount of starts. Uh, Daniel Jones has a 38% winning percentage. Donald has a 43% winning percentage. Um, when you look at the yards, Daniel Jones has, you know, 3,500 more yards, almost more or 2,500 more yards. Uh, he's got six, they both have the same average per throw. Uh, but Daniel Jones averages 30 yards per game more. Uh, Daniel Jones has almost 20 more touchdowns. I think 16 more touchdowns, has one less interception. So the interceptions per game have been higher for Daniel Jones, but at the same time, he's been throwing more touchdowns, which is funny because you would expect Daniel Jones to be at the bottom of the league with that. And then um, as far as quarterback rating, Daniel Jones has a better quarterback rating at 85. Uh, touchdown percentage is both 3.3. Interception percentage, Sam Donald's higher at 2.9 versus 2.1, so almost a percentage higher. And then Daniel Jones shows, this is showing how bad the offensive line has been for the Giants. Daniel Jones has been sacked, what is that, 60 more times than, than Sam Donald has in his career. So that's a high level look at these two players. And I think whichever quarterback has the better game, honestly, is going to be the reason that their team won this game. So taking a look at some more specifics, uh, the Giants offense is going to all be about the offensive line, as it always is. It's going to be about the offensive line uh, and and can they pass protect? Can they pass protect? Because you got Jonathan Grenard coming over from the Houston Texans. I think he had, what, 12, 13 sacks last year. Uh, he was across from, uh, I think Will, forgetting the guy's name, but High draft pick out of Alabama. I don't know why I'm forgetting his name, but he was across from that guy who won defensive rookie of the year, who for some reason Diggy doesn't remember his name. But he was across from him, and he he kind of dominated as, as that rookie got the double teams. Uh, Grenard was able to get those singles and, and just really dominate. But now he's edge one. Uh, you're going to have the rookie Dallas Turner out there, and you're going to have Van Ginkle as your other starting edge or across from Grenard. So... Look for Dallas Turner to try to push for a starting job or at least be that rotational edge week one for for uh, the Vikings. But they got in, they got a solid group of edges. I think their edges are kind of underrated. But I think the, the question here is, can these guys, uh, can these three edges take a step up? Because I think all of them you would like if they were your second or third edge rushers. But can Grenard step up and be at first, that first, you know, first string uh, alpha Batman edge rusher. That's something we haven't seen yet, and we'll see if we can uh, if we can find that out in week one. Hopefully not, but you know we're gonna have At out there who I think is gonna do a great job, and then we're gonna have uh, Illuminor on the other side, and he's looked good all season, all off season at right tackle, and even going into last season for the Raiders. But week one, you got to put the pen to paper. We got to see exactly how he looks, and if they can hold up. And pass pro, I feel really good. 
Daniel Jones has his struggles, but when he has a clean pocket, he looks like a pretty good quarterback. So that would make me feel good if we can pass protect. Next up, can we establish the line of scrimmage? Can we run the football? If we can run the football, we can get the play action going. Now, we don't have Saquon Barkley back there, but we do have the threat of Daniel Jones running, and that can help with some option stuff. And if we can get some of these, you know, some of these early runs, if we can get some, you know, 15, 8 yard, if we can just start to establish the line of scrimmage, that play action is going to open up, and Daniel Jones is a good quarterback off of the play action. Uh, also, just running the football, if you can, if you can run the football, um, it, it makes it a lot easier to win football games just in general. Um, Harrison Phillips is going to have something to say about that though in the middle at nose. Uh, he usually plays nose. Sometimes he plays one, but mostly he's playing nose. Um, not much of a pass rusher now, but two years ago in Buffalo, he had, uh, he had, I think an 11% pressure rate, which is really good for nose unless you're Dexter Lawrence, which he's ridiculous. But, uh, Harrison Phillips had a good pressure rate a couple of years ago, but ever since then, not much of a pass rusher, but a dominant run stuffer. So we got to figure out how we're going to attack that. Got to figure out if we can run the ball up the middle, if we're just going to have to attack those edges. That might just be our best course of action. Um, Looking further into Grenard, uh, he had almost a 20% pressure rate the second half of last season. So that is that is really impressive. That's fifth highest in the NFL over that uh, last over those last eight games or the last eight games that he played in. So we're going to, if he shows up firing on all cylinders, we're going to have to have an answer for that. Um, now let's look at the secondary for the Houston Texans. Um, Gilmore <laughs> is there. We're familiar with him, and we just got to see he's always been good. Uh, he had a nice season last year where he looked like a number one corner. But is he still there? Is he still the same player? Is he washed or not? And if he's not washed, is he going to follow Malik Neighbors around? If he's going to follow Malik, Malik Neighbors around, I wouldn't be surprised if he's taken out of, this, out of this game. I just wouldn't. You got a vet who is great at the line of scrimmage. Gilmore is amazing at the line of scrimmage. And Malik Neighbors... While he does have some nice release packages, he's not a guy that has the most fleshed out release package. So I could see him struggling uh, to, to, to have as dominant a game as he could going against a guy like Gilmore if Gilmore is right. If he's starting to take a step back, you know, anything goes. Uh, kind of like what happened with Patrick Peterson against Isaiah Hodgins. But if... Uh, if Gilmore is right, I could see him, you know, if he follows Malik Neighbors, I could very well see him coming out of the game. Uh, and when I say coming out of the game, I mean him being pretty silent, you know, not having a big game. And uh, then you got Shaq Griffin, who is a good corner. I, I don't think he's 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 really a great corner or an above average corner. I think he's a good corner and I don't think he's a horrible corner either. So, you know, solid cornerback, too. And we have to exploit that matchup. If Malik Neighbors is getting shut down by Gilmore, then we have got to find a way to to win that one on one against Shaq Griffin with Hyatt, with whoever he lines up against, with Slayton, and then Wandale against their slide. I'm taking Wandale all day. I think that's kind of where this offense is going to run as far as the passing game, and I think that may open things up outside. Also, you're going to be going after Wandale because. The Vikings blitz almost 50% of the time. You want to talk about Wink and his blitzes last year? Brian, like, they, they're blitzing. They are, they are, they are blitzing. You know, they, it, it's almost, it's, it's a given that you're going to get pressured 50% of the time. And when I say pressured, I mean they're going to blitz. Now, can we pick it up? That's something. We got some young running backs behind, um, behind Devin Singletary. So does Eric Gray go to the bench because he can't pick up these pressures? That's something we don't know yet. If he can, you know, in a live game action, if he can pick up some of these blisses from Brian Flores, because uh, he's going to definitely be bringing them, as you saw in Miami a couple of years ago. All right, so real quickly, I want to shout out Underdog Fantasy, a partner here on the channel. Really great app that I like using. I've been using for the past couple of years, actually, specifically in Pick'ems. And for this week one, uh, to go along with my analysis, I have Sam Donald lower than 231 and a half passing yards. I have Daniel Jones higher 
and 214 and a half passing yards. I have Justin Jefferson higher than 81 and a half receiving yards. I have Malik Neighbors higher than 59 and a half receiving yards. Would have probably gone lower if his uh, if his number was higher, if it was maybe 70 or 80, but I think he'll get over 59 and a half receiving yards because he's wide receiver one. Aaron Jones is going to be higher than uh, 0.5 touchdowns. I mean, what running back, what starting running back doesn't score against the New York Giants? Devin Singletary will be higher than nine and a half receiving yards just because of all of the blitzes that Brian Flores is going to be sending. And then Wando Robinson, because of those same blitzes, I think will be higher than three and a half receptions. I think he'll get a screen. I think he'll get a slant. And I think, you know, he'll get some more catches organically. So you guys let me know what you think of my picks for this week's Pick'ems. If you use code DIGGY on underdogfantasy.com or in the Underdog Fantasy app, you can get your deposit matched up all the way to $1,000. You, you can get anything. If you put in five, you might get $1,000. If you put in 100, you might get 1,000. Could get anything from zero to 1,000, so give it a shot. And I promise, guys, it is fun. I've been doing it for years, and I would not be mentioning it on the channel unless it was something I did myself. Now let's take a look at the Minnesota offense. Um, first off, just watching their tape over last year, the preseason, they do a lot of great things. Uh, Kevin O'Connell is a really great play caller and a, and a great play designer, in my opinion. He does a lot of motion, and that motion is where he has uh, he has Jordan Addison almost line up behind the tight end, in between the tight end and the tackle, and he just gets these free releases and he just, you know, breaks inside and he's wide open downfield. And they do this other uh, motion where Jordan Addison motions to that same spot and it just confuses the defense and the tight end is wide open in the flat, you know, for eight to 10 yards. So he uses a lot of motion to get guys open, similar to what Dable does, except I think Kevin O'Connell does it even better than I've seen in Dable's offense. And we're gonna have to watch out just for that play design because things are gonna be easier for Sam Darnold just because of who his play caller is. Um, Justin Jefferson is obviously the, the big the big issue in the room. He's the guy that, that, that can really wreck a game for us. But the thing is, Jordan Jefferson really wasn't contained. You know, he wasn't shut down or anything in the two games we played against him two years ago, and we won the game. So that's the first thing and then even looking at his 100 yard games from last year most of the 100 yard games he had the, the vikings lost so it seems like stopping justin jefferson doesn't really you know it's not really a guaranteed win so it seems like what you have to do is stop the the ball from being spread around to everybody else now that may have changed since you got a different quarterback there but for now you're not going to ever shut down justin jefferson you can only hope to stop him I mean, you, I mean, you can only hope to s slow him down. So he has been the leader in yards ever since he got in the league until he got hurt. And he only trails Tyreek by less than 200 yards. And he missed like four or five games last year. So he's legit. He's legit the best wide receiver in football. You're not going to stop him. And we got to figure out a way to, to win in spite of him getting 120 yards. Because if he decides to, to put on his shoes, right foot, left foot, and, and suits up for the game, not much, but the quarterback position is going to stop him from, from getting 100 yards. Um, Jordan Addison, like I talked, they move Jordan Addison around a lot. Um, he's really successful in these in-breaking routes, does a lot of damage downfield on him, and, and I just think he could he could be a real problem too. Now, he has the DUI that he was charged for with the misdemeanor, and the NFL says that you know they're looking into suspending him. But we haven't seen anything that and, you know, it's Monday, so maybe a suspension would come down before Sunday. But as of now, he looks like he's going to play. Uh, luckily, there's no uh, tight end, TJ Hawkinson, that we have to worry about. But you do have to worry about these two superstar wide receivers, in my opinion. I think Jordan Addison is going to be a superstar. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if he plays. But if he does, we're going to have to worry about him on those inside routes, and we will have to try to shut this guy down because if not, um, you know, you can't have two wide receivers running all through your defense. And then they've added Aaron Jones. And Aaron Jones to me is such an underrated player. Um, he's a guy that, that can run, he can catch, and he just kind of got forgotten once Aaron Rodgers left that Packers team. 
But I think Aaron Jones is is a really good player, and we're going to have to worry about him. And that's why I really think it's important for us to establish the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Duh, you always have to do that, but you really are going to have to do it in this situation because Aaron Jones is going to be a problem. You know, he, he's he's great in the open field. He can catch. He can pass block. He can run between the tackles. He can run outside tackles. He can hit the home run. So he's someone that we have to watch out for. Now, as far as their offensive line goes, it's better than it was before. But that interior is going to be an issue for them. Ed Ingram, former LSU Tiger, has been struggling, uh, struggling since he's been there. And, you know, it is what it is there. He's been struggling. He hasn't been able to find his footing yet. But at the same time, they have two tackles that are really good. They got Brian O'Neill. They got um, Tristan Derisaw, who's just as good, if not, you know, better than Andrew Thomas. And that's that's high praise because Andrew Thomas, I think, is, you know, arguably the best left tackle in football. And Derisaw is probably right there with him. So, again, don't expect... A lot of our good players, like Neighbors, who's going against uh, an, a former All-Pro corner who's great at the line of scrimmage, and then you got Brian Burns, might be going against Darisaw. And Brian Burns may not appear at the game because Darisaw might just lock him up. And don't take that as, you know, Brian Burns is a, is a free agency bust. He didn't do anything. He's going against Christian Darisaw, and Darisaw does pretty much what Andrew Thomas does, which is erase that whole side of the field. So if Brian Burns does show up against Darisaw, we got ourselves an issue at edge. We, we got ourselves a dominant edge player. Um, same thing with Brian O'Neill over there. He's not in that tier of AT and uh, Christian Darisaw, but he is a really good right tackle, and he's, he's not someone who's a pushover. So this is going to be a good test for Thibodeau. And it may be a situation where we switch Thibodeau and Burns and, and see what happens, you know, over there. That interior, I think Dex is going to have a ball, I think, against uh, Bradbury, Bradbury and Ed Ingram. And I, I really think that, that they're going to be able to, to get that pressure in the interior. Dex should be able to kind of dominate in there. So you're going to see a lot of double teams on him which should open things up for who's ever at that second D tackle position, which of course is a weakness for us. So Eliza Chapman breakout game coming, maybe nacho breakout game. We, we need you because you're going to be getting one-on-ones all season long. And um, we really got to establish that line of scrimmage that there's no way we're winning if we can't pressure Sam Darnold, because if you pressure Sam Darnold, he collapses. If you pressure Daniel Jones, he collapses. Same quarterback situation, uh, similar, similar situations as far as quarterbacks who I believe have the talent, who just have not been able to put together because what's around them, who also sort of have crumbled under pressure. It's more specifically Sam Donald. You know, he, he's got, he got caught <laughs> saying, seeing ghosts on, on primetime, uh, TV. So we've got to, to make sure that our quarterback is clean and their quarterback isn't clean. And I think we can win this game. Uh, give me the Giants. In this game, 24-13, New York Giants. Big margin of victory there for the Giants. We're a team that doesn't score much, but I think this will be the change of that, and I think we'll start this season off pretty good. You made it this deep into the video. Come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily, and during the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squad.